G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So last week I posted the third video in the series of my full fish room tour and you can watch the full playlist of all three videos so far in the playlist right here. However, this week obviously I'm going to be showing you part four of my fish room tour where I'm going to show you what's in the bottom row of tanks as well as my sump and how that works. So why don't we get straight into it with part four of my full fish room tour. So this is the first four foot tank uh, in the fish room and its dimensions are four foot by two foot high by two foot wide. And in this tank I have two different species of fish with the main fish being my four Lampr Neolamprologus tetrathophalus and the other fish are five Kawanga golds. These are the only fish that I have in my entire fish room that are Malawi cichlids. So you can see some of the subdominant uh, Koanga golds in the corner there, they're quite dark. And the dominant male, the dominant Koanga gold there, showing his full yellow colours with black stripes. Quite a nice fish. Um, but yeah, my, the main fish in this fish uh, tank are uh, my Neolamprologus tetrathopalus, the trets, which are also commonly referred to as poor man's fontosa. Now, last week I showed you the two uh, other trets that I have in other tanks which uh, I intended to put in this tank with these guys because I thought the four that I had in this four foot tank were all female. And the reason for that is that uh, this fish that you see here I know is a female because she has spawned by herself about five or six times now. And she, none of the fish, she doesn't let any of the fish in, in this tank near her when she's spawning. So that made me believe that all the fish, the other three trets in this tank were female as well. But you can see the other tret in the frame here on the left. I suspect that this tret is a male because the behavior with this fish and the female that always spawns by itself has changed in the last month or two. And the last time this female here spawned, I actually thought that that other fish, this one here, was um, spawning with her because she was letting she was letting that other fish get very close to her and her eggs and now that that has happened I'm waiting for her to spawn again um, she started to clear off some of the pool filter sand off this bit of slate here a couple days ago but and I thought she was going to be spawning soon but she didn't spawn um, and there's some sand that's been placed back on the slate. So I don't know what happened there. Um, her ovipositor is extended again though, so it might, she might spawn again in the next few days, in the next week. Um, and I'm hoping to see that other fish spawn with her. Because it's getting pretty frustrating seeing these beautiful fish spawn and the eggs to be constantly unfertilized. So the reason I bought those other two fish in those smaller tanks that you saw in last week's video was in, a, in the hope to get a male out of those two, put them in this tank and hopefully they'll spawn with her. But now that she may have formed somewhat of a bond with this other fish that's underneath the, the cave there, you can just make it, make it out. Um, I'm not gonna take that risk. Um, and you know, endanger the fish that aren't in here. Put, put, to put them in this tank, they could possibly get belted up um, and killed. So to save them from um, stress, I'm not gonna do that just yet. The Kawanga Golds in here are basically here for, uh, to play a role as dither fish. They also clean the, the tank, um, keep the algae pretty, pretty low. So uh, they pick at it and um, they, they've helped keep this tank clean and help calm the aggression between the trets in this tank. So like I said, there are four trets in this tank. There's another one there you can see coming out behind that rock. Um, that's a subdominant adult. And there's one in the top corner there, which I really hate seeing because uh, it's, it's, that, that really does get picked on a lot. However, you need to spread the aggression amongst your cichlids. So that's why the Koenga Golds are in here to help that poor little guy in the top corner there um, feel a little bit more at ease in this tank. But you can see, you can see how they interact, these two um, trets. When they come close together, you can see the coin of gold getting in the way there. Um, 
But yeah, the Coringa Golds, since I've introduced them into the tank, have really um, helped suppress the aggression amongst all four threats in the tank. Now, when you see these threats caught in, this female at the front here goes, he, her bars almost go very pale and uh, almost uh, go grey. Whereas the, what I suspect is the male there in the centre of the frame, um, he gets a horizontal dark bar through all his vertical bars when he's displaying with this female down here. So, like the Lampro, the, the, yeah, like the Lampralogus ocellatus gold that I have, when they caught with each other, they get that black horizontal bar or dark horizontal bar down the length of their body. And same with the Neo Lampralogus such as the Palus, they get a similar bar. Uh, down the down the length of their body, so um, must might be a trait amongst uh, some of the Tanganyikan cichlids that they get this dark horizontal bar when they're courting with other fish of the same species. So I've only got two four-foot tanks in this fish room, and obviously this is the first one. So why don't we look at the second four-foot tank that I've got and see the fish that are in that? So guys, this is my other four-foot tank my 4B2B2 and it's got a couple uh, Tanganyikan cichlids in here uh, usually I try to keep the species separate and run species only tanks over um, with this fish tank I've got a couple species so what's in here we've got uh, the excess male Lamprologus ocellatus gold this male um, so I bought four, four uh, hockeys back in, um, when was it? I think, I believe February last year, February in 2019, and um, grew them up together in the hope of getting a pair, and obviously I did. And he's the excess male. That, that little guy there, he's actually pretty, um, pretty aggressive, and um, holds his own in this tank. Um, yeah, you can see him chasing the other fish away. Uh, the other fish I've got in here are four brevis, now Lamprologus brevis, and you can see the Oki just. Um, defending his territory. Those brevis are pretty peaceful fish for for um, shell dwellers, especially when you compare them to the Yockeys. And um, he he pushes them around the tank. I had the Neolamprologus brevis in this tank first uh, for a couple of weeks, and then I introduced that that Oki one Oki male into this tank. And within two days, he had moved them out of this pretty much two foot section of tank and their shells. You kick them out. Uh, that's how aggressive he is. And normally you don't really want to keep shellies together. Um, however, I've done that because I don't have anywhere else to house him. And um, it's, it's quite a large tank. And there's a lot of room for the fish to get away from each other in here. And they, 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 it's, it's, they all pretty much get along now. Um, and the other fish I have in this tank are my Ventralis Chaitika. So these guys, I bought four of them a couple months ago. They were quite small, and uh, they, these two, these two ventralis you can see in the frame here are the males, I believe, because they're pretty much double the size of the other two that I have. Uh, so, and they they caught with these two. So I'm hoping these two are females. But these two males seem to follow each other around. So, uh, but sometimes they do fight. Uh, but. When they get their courting colours on, it's, it's they're pretty pretty good looking fish. They get like a br black breast, uh, and they get that iridescent blue green electric blue green shimmer down their the length of their bodies. You see this guy starting to kind of swim around like he's about to court. Um, their mouth brooding cichlids. Uh, there's a couple mouth brooding cichlids in Lake Tanganyika, uh, such as Trophius and uh, Trophius species and Frontosa. And the feather fins, uh, leptosomas, all that kind of, all those kind of cichlids. Um, but these ventralis are mouth breeding cichlids as well. You can see, uh, unlike uh, Malawi cichlids that have the egg spots on their anal fin, uh, these guys, these ventralis, have egg dummies on their pelvic fins. So you can see their large or very long pelvic fins. And at the end of those is a little egg dummy, a little yellow spot that you can see in this footage there. Um, and that is what the male uses to entice the female to come to his pit and pick at those think with her thinking that they are eggs that she needs to pick up and put in her mouth. Now they've got a lot of growing to do. I bought these in November 2019 
and it's, on, it's now February 2020, um, and they've grown quite a bit. Uh, the males, well, I thought I suspect I've got two. I suspect I've got two males and two females, um, and the males, like just like that guy you see there, uh, can grow up to six inches, so 15 centimeters, and the females growing a little bit smaller than that, up to five inches, um, when they're fully mature, so about 12 centimeters. And I'm hoping to get a couple more of these guys. So, yeah, they're getting their they're getting their blue and green sheen on them. And the tank is basically for them. This tank is 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 going to be theirs uh, because I'll be selling those adult brevis now that I've got a uh, breeding trio and quite a number of babies. I don't need the four brevis that I've got in this tank, so they'll be going soon. And I might be selling this gold oki male, this excess male. Uh, but I'm hoping to grow up some of the fry to sell with him you know, in the coming months. But he's doing all right. He's all right in this tank. Um, shows quite a nice colour, um, in fact more yellow than the male that uh, the female spawn with. Um, but yeah, the other fish I've got in this tank are just a common variety bristlenose. However, I've got both short fin and long fin in here. Uh, they're doing quite well as well. And I've got a total of seven in this tank. But eventually they will be moved out of this tank and be placed in their own tank uh, once they get a bit bigger uh, in the rack behind me. Uh, with some nice driftwood and uh, Indian almond leaves so uh, so I can grow them and um, so I can breed them in those tanks and hopefully have plenty of fry so I can uh, put some catfish in each of these tanks to help me keep the algae at bay. But yeah so there you go guys that's my uh, four, my other four foot by two foot by two foot tank. And guys this is my sum. So it's a four foot tank basically, uh, four foot long, two foot wide, about two and a half foot tall, and um, it basically runs the entire fish room. So all 20 tanks can flow back into this sump. So uh, we've got three drain lines. You can't see the third one at the back there, but that uh, drain line is for the two four footers. This drain line here uh, drains the top row of tanks, this one drains the middle row of tanks. And you can see this horizontal drain line here is for the two four footers. And it drains into a bulkhead on the opposite side of this chamber here. Now, they all drain into this chamber. This is just your mechanical filtration, so just basically filter um, sponge. I've got sponges in here, the double headed um, XY2822 uh, sponge filters. These are new sponge filters that are going to be going on the new. Uh, stands, uh, so I'm getting them seeded with beneficial bacteria now, so they'll be ready to go soon. Um, then you've got this bubble trap that's here, uh, with a pothos plant growing out of it. This is pretty small, this pothos plant, but um, it will grow and um, take up the nutrients that are in the in the in the water and uh, the nitrates. So that's why this pothos plant is here. So in the next chamber, we've got uh, the biological filtration. So the first layer here is just some filter floss to hold up all the um, biological filtration media above the egg crate so it doesn't fall through. So this first white uh, rock here is pumice. It's actually cecum matrix. It's got eight liters of the stuff in here. And that's all it took up. That's the depth it took up, about an inch, not even, um, in this sump. That's how big this sump is. The next layer is um, black lava rock. Then red lava rock, basically because I couldn't source any more black lava rock, I just bought some red. It's exactly the same product, just a different colour. After that is some um, hydroponic beads that you get, can get from Bunnings. Um, very porous uh, media that is uh, more, I reckon, more porous than the Seeker Matrix. It's very buoyant. You can see um, I've got still some floating in this uh, chamber of the sump, and that uh, this media has been in here for. A, at least two months now and it's still floating so um, it's very porous. It's used for uh, aquaponics and uh, and um, hydroponics and yeah it's it's a great media for host hosting beneficial bacteria. After this chamber uh, water flows down and up this bubble trap and into the return chamber. In the return chamber I've got two Eheim 300 watt heaters. They hardly ever turn on, they're basically backup because this fish room is heated by aircon. Um, and then next to that I've got my two return pumps, two 15,000 litre per hour pumps 
They're made by Jaboa. Uh, the one on the right returns the water to the top row of tanks, and the one on the left returns water to the middle row and bottom row of tanks. Here's the controllers. Uh, you can see the one on the right here, that's controlling the top row of tanks, it's running at 36 watts. This one's controlling uh, the middle and bottom row of tanks, running at 47 watts. Basically, um, if I run it any higher, I could potentially flood the system and uh, because the drains can only drain at a certain speed, basically, uh, because of the size of the PVC uh, drain lines. So uh, you've just got to be cautious if you set something up like that. Try and work out what the, what the limit is, what your plumbing can, uh, can support. I could run these higher, and I have run them higher, but there's no need. Like the, the, the flow is uh, sufficient enough for this fish room, um, and especially for the top row of tanks, mainly I'm housing fry uh, and in the top row, and if I, if I run this any higher, they're exerting too much energy and they could tire them out and exhaust them, so this is more than enough for the top row of tanks. They've got a, like a head height of like four or five meters, these pumps, so um, more than enough here. So the other thing to do with this plumbing too, I've got two check valves in here. Uh, that's if, if, the, uh, if there's a blackout and the power cuts, I only get the water draining to the drain lines uh, and the water does not flow out of the return lines because um, if the water was to flow out of the return lines as well, you could potentially uh, flood your sump. Because there are a lot of there is a lot of water in the return lines. There's quite a lot of water in the drain lines as well, obviously. And um, when the power cuts, this sump can fill up to about here, um, and that's that's more than a, you know enough safety net basically to um, not flood flood the system. So having check lines on your return valves is important. Um, and if you're going to set up a fish room like that, I highly recommend it. That's what those two fat kind of bits of pipe are. In, in, uh, the, the, in the return lines. But yeah, so that's um, the sum. So there you have it guys, part four of my full fish room tour. Next week, however, I'm gonna be showing you what's in the new racks in part five of my fish room tour. I really can't believe it's taken five videos to show you my full fish room. But yeah, next week I'm gonna be showing you what's in these tanks and I really can't wait to show you. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that video. If you like this video though, please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. Alright guys, I'll wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in part 5 next week on my full fishing tour. See yous.